Near record warmth is expected in most of the valley Wednesday afternoon and next. Will an atmospheric river soon be in California's future? I'm Emma Ott. Find out all that and more tonight at 8. The vote on leasing the Bitwise building is next Thursday. I might expose them the full story coming up. Attorney General Bonta and five other state attorney generals announced legal action against a popular social media company. I'm Valentina Saldana with the full story tonight at 8. Also tonight, a Dinuba public school principal is being accused of killing two people on Sunday, all because he was drunk. We'll have that story and many others next in prime time. New, local, unique. My TV 53 News at 8 starts right now. Good evening. Welcome to the San Joaquin Valley's only 8 p.m. news. I'm Austin Reed. It is a Monday, December the 4th. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you had a great weekend. We are in storm mode tonight. Get ready for a roller coaster week of weather all across the San Joaquin Valley, which includes fog, plus a massive storm it is set to hit the Pacific Northwest. New tonight, my TV 53's Emma Ott is in the news center with more in our big story. Emma? California's weather pattern in December is set to be a mixed bag of rain and shine. This week, near record warmth is expected in Fresno, Bakersfield, and Hanford today through Wednesday afternoon. However, temperatures will trend cooler in the latter part of the week, making an atmospheric river a real possibility for the Pacific Northwest region of California in the month of December. Temperatures throughout the San Joaquin Valley Tuesday afternoon will be 2 to 4 degrees warmer than Monday afternoon. By Wednesday, high temperatures throughout Central California will be around 15 degrees above normal for this time of year. Uh, the normal high for Fresno is uh, um, 58 degrees and uh, it looks like um, and that's going to be for, for, for Wednesday. So, you know, normal being 58. Winters in California aren't as cold as they used to be, and that's not a good thing. Other parts of the state have warmed at least one degree, and the majority of the U.S. has risen an average of 3.8 degrees. Climate Central's 2023 winter package graphic shows the average change in winter temperature between December and February from 1970 to 2022. By early Saturday morning, freezing temperatures are expected across much of the San Joaquin Valley. Here are probabilities for minimum temperatures of 32 degrees or lower at some San Joaquin Valley locations on December 9th, 2023. Uh, looks like by Thursday, um, the um, temperature or the high temperature in Fresno may only reach 60 degrees, so that would be about a 10 degree drop. The National Weather Service says warmer winter temperatures could make storms more hazardous. However, we won't see any precipitation just yet. Wet conditions are certainly a possibility in California as a strong El Nino continues through the winter season. Even though El Nino eventually may play a role in shaping winter weather, it's not expected to have a strong impact on rain and snow this month. Keep in mind the possibility of patchy dense fog forming this evening into Tuesday morning in the valley. Be mindful to drive at reduced speeds, use caution, and allocate extra travel time to reach your destination safely. I'm Emma Ott reporting with My TV 53 News at 8. Yeah, that was the talk of the newsroom around here today. Emma, thank you. In the meantime, Southern California is also dealing with unseasonably high temperatures. A combination of a high-pressure system and weak offshore winds is the cause down there. Tuesday will be the warmest day, with highs reaching into the high 70s and low 80s. Downtown LA is forecast to reach 81 degrees. We will have your full weather forecast coming up later in this newscast. One person was killed earlier this morning after a mobile home caught on fire. This happened in Yokuts Valley around 5 a.m. Cal Fire says the home is on Otter Lane right near George Smith Road. One person wasn't the only one who died. Officials say an animal was also discovered inside the rubble. The cause of the fire is under investigation. We have a commercial structure fire in Corcoran to tell you about. This is video from Louis Valley on Facebook. Kings County Fire, along with the aid of Tulare County Fire, Lamore, and Tachi Palace Fire, assisted in battling this blaze, which broke out earlier this morning. Upon arrival, the building was fully engulfed and smoke was showing 
inside of the building. The fire was extinguished a short time later. This, by the way, is a former hospital site. We spoke with Fresno Fire today after paramedics, police, and firefighters, of course, rushed to this scene earlier today. My TV 53 News was there. A vehicle crashed onto the front yard of a home on Michigan Avenue, just east of Maroa. One woman actually died. Fresno PD says a mother and her daughter were driving when the mom actually suffered a medical issue behind the wheel. Whoever called it in said that the vehicle was on fire, but uh, it, it was never on fire. It was just the uh, impact of the, uh, the radiator and hot engine coolant. Uh, kind of creating steam. Now, the daughter was said to have minor injuries. No other details are being released at this time. New from Fresno police add more homicides to the 2023 total. On Saturday, just after 4 a.m., Southeast officers were dispatched to the 4300 block of East Olive Avenue. Officers arrived and located four adult male gunshot victims. All four were transported to CRMC. Two of the victims succumbed to their injuries. Now, the deceased victims have been identified as 30-year-old Antonio Areo and 41-year-old Tim Allen May. The two surviving males are listed as in critical condition. They are expected, though, to recover. Now, investigators learned that a small gathering was taking place at an apartment complex when a disturbance began. Gunshots were fired. Now, if you know anything about the suspect or suspects, call Fresno PD. Just before 2.30 this morning, CHP Fresno received a call of an injury collision on northbound 99 north of Olive. Preliminary investigation indicates a Lexus was being driven by a 22-year-old female northbound on 99. A Nissan Versa was being driven by a 28-year-old. The Lexus driver failed to see the Nissan directly in her path and struck the rear of the Nissan. The Lexus veered out of control and sideswiped a tree within the east shoulder lane before driving through a chain-linked fence. The 22-year-old driver of the Lexus sustained critical injuries and was later pronounced dead at the scene. The 28-year-old was not responsible for the cause of the crash, but... It has been determined that he was under the influence of alcohol. The investigation continues. Turning to news in the South Valley now, a Dinuba school principal accused of killing two people bonded out of jail today. This after being arrested for his role in a suspected DUI crash on Sunday night near Reedley. CHP arrested 43-year-old Dinuba resident Blake Benham, who is also a Kennedy Elementary School principal. The crash occurred on Road 56. He was driving a white Ford truck when his vehicle drifted into oncoming traffic. The truck ran into an SUV with four people inside. Two people died at the scene, and the other two people are now recovering from serious injuries. No word just yet from the school on if the principal is or is not on paid leave. New tonight from the Kings County Sheriff's Office, between November 29th of this year and through December 1st, members of the Kings County Sheriff's Office, Hanford, Lamore, Corcoran, and California Department of Justice, along with a few other agencies, conducted an operation to combat human trafficking and child exploitation. During the operation, investigators spoke to numerous individuals through internet sites and mobile applications known to foster this activity. Through those conversations, several people arranged to meet in order to pay for sex, receive money for sex, meet with underage girls and boys for sex, and arrange for underage girls to enter into human trafficking. A total of 19 people were actually arrested on various charges. As for good news, officials say two females were rescued from a human trafficking ring. Developing tonight, California Attorney General Rob Bonta and a bipartisan group of attorney generals have announced legal action against a very popular social media company. New tonight, reporter Valentina Saldana is in the newsroom with these details. California Attorney General Rob Bonta has announced a public release of a largely unredacted copy of a federal complaint followed by a bipartisan coalition of 33 attorney generals against meta platforms and affiliates. Back on October 24th of this year and co-led by Bonta, the coalition is alleging that Meta designed and deployed harmful features on Instagram and Facebook that addict children and teens to their mental and physical detriment. 
as originally filed, much of the federal complaint included information under seal. Evidence that every additional hour young people spend on social media is associated with an increased severity in symptoms of depression. Highlights from the newly revealed portions of the complaint include Mark Zuckerberg personally vetoed Meta's proposed policy to ban image filters that stimulated the effects of plastic surgery, despite internal pushback and an expert consensus that such filters harms users' mental health, especially for women and girls. Reporting in the newsroom tonight, I'm Valentina Saldana for My TV 53 News at 8. All right, Valentina, to read the full report, just head to the California Attorney General's website. Other news on this Monday, Fresno County is actively pursuing additional funding initiatives aimed at expanding Millerton Road. This map represents a formal project funding request illustrating the County of Fresno's commitment to enhancing infrastructure in that community. Fresno County Supervisor Nathan Magsig says he is eager to persist in his advocacy efforts for the improvement of this vital roadway. Magsig also says this project will ensure a safer and more efficient transportation network. And finally, in your first a few minutes of nonstop news at eight, later this week, the Fresno City Council is set to decide on what to do with the Bitwise building in downtown Fresno. This comes after the company shut down and the Fresno owners are being charged with fraud. New at eight, my TV 53's Marcus Esparza is on the story. Council members will soon determine the fate of the Bitwise building right here in downtown. The building is located at 747 O Street in downtown Fresno. Council member Miguel Arias says it keeps downtown as the center for government work as it allows us to place our public works capital staff responsible for reconstructing downtown in the heart of the city. It's a win-win for everyone. Despite Bitwise's complete failure, they did manage to create a top-of-the-line office space also stated by Arias. The base rent for the building would be $800,301 annually, increasing to $955,915 by the end of the seven-year term. There are several three optional one-year extensions for the seven-year lease. The charges for the maintenance could be up to 364,581. Make sure to stay with us here on My TV 53 News for the rest of this week to find out what the ultimate decision will be from the council. Reporting in downtown Fresno, I'm Mark Sparza with My TV 53 News at 8. All right, Marcus, thanks for that update. That does it for your first few minutes of nonstop news today, but don't go anywhere. We are just getting started. Still ahead, this year's electric Christmas parade was held this past weekend in Clovis. We have some highlights for you. But next, there will be an upcoming recruitment event for per diem election process aides all across Kern County. Ali Soper will explain. Plus, it is a new week. Emma was telling you earlier, get ready for that roller coaster. We'll have your full weather forecast ahead as well. New, local, unique. This is my TV 53 News at 8. Don't go anywhere. We are back in a little over two minutes. This is my TV 53 news. New local unique with Austin Reed. You're watching My TV 53 News at 8. Thanks for staying with us on this 4th of December. We are going to head to the waters now where a woman has been killed in an apparent shark attack at a beach resort in Mexico's Pacific coast. The woman, who has not been officially named, was found dead by emergency services at the scene in Melake Bay on Saturday. CNN says the incident took place on the same day as a swimming race in the bay, which is located in Jalisco State in western Mexico. The investigation will continue. All right, closer to home and now to your big stories in Kern County for our viewers watching on KNXT. Do you need to clear out some space for the holidays? Well, the city of Bakersfield has you covered.
they will be hosting a free bulky item drop-off event. It's this Saturday, December 9th, at 4200 Panorama Drive. It runs from 8 a.m. until noon, so you only have a couple of hours. Well, on Tuesday, there will be an upcoming recruitment event for per diem election process aides all across Kern County. New Tonight reporter Ali Soper has what you need to know. Election season is kicking off in just a few months. And if you're looking for a job where you can make a difference by directly supporting our residents through the democratic process, then this position is for you. Kern County's Elections Division is hiring for per diem elections process aides and holding an upcoming recruitment event where you can learn more about the job. Join Human Resources on Tuesday, December 5th from 3 to 7 p.m at 1115 Truxton Avenue in Bakersfield on the first floor. Minimum qualifications include being 18 years or older, registered to vote, knowledge of computer skills and customer service, and full-time availability. To learn more or to apply, please visit kerncounty.com slash careers. And that was Ali Soper with kerncounty.com reporting. My TV 53 News continues with the Valley's local forecast. Follow MyTV53 on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube right now for continuing coverage. We are covering the globe tonight as the United Nations COP Climate Summit is in full effect. Democracy Now!'s Amy Goodman is there. The United Nations COP28 Climate Summit opened here in Dubai Thursday with delegates agreeing to adopt a new loss and damage fund to help poorer nations deal with the disproportionate impact of the climate crisis. Initial funding will start at $429 million, just a fraction of what's needed to address the annual cost of climate catastrophes. Governments from the Global South and climate activists welcomed the fund, but underlined its deficiencies. This is Libyan activist Nisa Beck. Considering the fact that most of these developing countries that actually need the fund are politically instable, already the prerequisite sort of um, for receiving the fund is not there. The loss and damage fund will only be a band-aid if fossil fuel continue to be produced. Loss and damage from climate change cost 1.5 trillion last year alone. And that was Amy Goodman with Democracy Now! reporting. Closer to home, the Fresno Christmas tree lighting ceremony took place outside City Hall just about an hour ago. There was also live music, a craft station, sweets, hot chocolate, a snow show, and a special guest, Santa. Um, it's a really tall tree. How tall is it? 30 feet, I think? Yeah, um, feet. yeah it's a pretty tall tree. And we usually would have it at Mariposa Plaza, uh -huh. but because it is going to be going under construction, right. we're moving it to Fresno City Hall. And we're really excited to work with the city. And, and from Fresno to Clovis, tonight was the big night in Clovis as the city council hosted the city's Christmas tree lighting 
This was earlier this evening at 6.30. Now, this was the annual Christmas tree lighting after the tree was lit. The evening continued with holiday music, more lights, treats, and special visitors from the North Pole. Now, this year, the tree is brand new. And on Saturday night, the annual Children's Electric Christmas Parade took place in Old Town Clovis. New tonight, we have some highlights for you. The Clovis East High School Air Force Junior ROTC program is a program that teaches grades 8 through 12 the importance of citizenship and giving back to their communities. Merry Christmas from Hopperwood Training Stables. They offer year-round riding lessons, multiple camp programs, as well as horse breeding. I'd like to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. High Performance Academy is a soccer based organization located in the Central Valley that focuses on soccer camps. My daughters went, they said they had a blast. Now you can watch the entire parade on the City of Clovis's website. Next at 8. Speaking of Christmas, Brenda Lee, who sang Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. Uh, she is celebrating with a big win tonight. Details right after this. Rockin' around the Christmas tree at the Christmas party hop. I just love this final story. On Monday, so today, Hall of Famer Brenda Lee's 1958 classic, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart for the first time, 65 years following its debut. Why? Well, this is all thanks in part to her new music video released just a few weeks ago. Rockin' Around the Christmas at the Christmas party hop. Mistletoe hall where you can see every couple tries to stop. Big congrats to her. Hey, let's get a final look at your forecast from Fresno to Bakersfield. We keep, I keep using this word, but do expect a roller coaster uh, weather week. Looks like we're going to warm up and then cool back down. So we'll keep you posted on that. And we are almost out of time. Thanks for watching tonight. I'm Austin Breed. Hoping your news is good news. We'll be back tomorrow. Hope you are as well. Good night.